Now it's time for one thing more To taste the taste worth shopping for Hey, Chick-fil-A today Chick-fil-A The boneless breast of chicken We're famous for Hey, Chick-fil-A today Chick-fil-A The good taste has you coming back for more Hey, Chick-fil-A today Chick-fil-A The taste worth shopping Here we are back for more of our revised reality. I'm your tasteful host, Jacobian. Today it's my pleasure to cover case file number three, the third of my foundational five. It's tough to follow the cornucopia, but if there's ever an Emmy in the same weight class ready to go toe to toe, it's Chick fil A. Ranking high with Fruit of the Loom for the same fundamental reason. The overabundance of anchor experiences would never be possible unless the restaurant once existed the previously known way. For those brand new to the Mandela Effect, you may be shocked to learn that never has a fast food restaurant been spelled C-H-I-C Chick-fil-A. Official company history states it's always been a standard spelling of Chick, going all the way back to their first restaurant in 1967, their first freestanding restaurant in 1986, and so on ever after. However, my life experience begs to differ, and I know so many of you out there watching beg to differ as well. The amount of people who've experienced anchors with this is off the charts, all connected by an important key feature, that being the quirky spelling of the restaurant's name. Many goofing on the well-known characteristic with a variety of jokes such as, the chicken must be very fashionable because it's chic filet. That it's not a fast food place they're eating at, but a fancy French restaurant, chic filet. And because of that, they would charge higher prices. People knew it was called chic, but I comically pronounce it chic because of the spelling. That was the entire point of the gag. Even linking it to another brand with jokes aimed at girls who happened to wear chick jeans back in the day. That hey, she must really like Chick-fil-A. Jokes that are ruined and make no sense at all now with the critical component of the humor being lost. Then there are the more mundane but just as notable anchors, such as children newly learning how to spell, eagerly pointing out the obvious, easy to notice air. General conversations amongst friends and family wondering out loud why they left the K out. Former employees who say customers would routinely ask if the name is pronounced Chic or Chick fil A. Experiences, conversation that should never have taken place if the restaurant always had the standard spelling. Though it was pronounced Chick fil A, we all somehow knew it to be spelled C H I C, which makes no sense at all unless that's collectively what we literally saw. This change has been especially undeniable to me because my mom used to work at Chick-fil-A. My first exposure to the restaurant was back in 1989 when I was in sixth grade. My mom was at a low point in her life, newly divorced with three kids, struggling to get back on her feet in a new city. She started a job at her local mall at an indoor Chick-fil-A. I'd never heard of the chain before. Because of that, my mom starting to work there, I paid extreme attention to the sign. It was C-H-I-C, Chick-fil-A, plain as day, no question about it. At times while she worked, I would wander around the mall, going to the toy stores or arcade. In such a large place, it was obviously important to know the name and location to get back to her. And the beacon for that was a restaurant sign. I was well old enough to read it correctly and well old enough to get there being intentionally cute with the spelling so the name would be memorable and stand out. And guess what? It worked. It very much stood out and I very much remembered. Not only with this location, but the many others I've seen open since especially during the earlier 2000s when they were springing up everywhere in my area. Always a C-H-I-C-F-I-L-A, pronounced Chick-fil-A. I know it as certain as anything else I've accurately observed in life. And yes, you best believe during that exact same phone call with my mom asking her about Fruit of the Loom, the very next question was about the spelling of Chick-fil-A. Her answer, an instantaneous C-H-I-C. I asked if she was certain. She said, yes, of course, she worked there. I told her mom, guess what? It's never been that. She said I'm wrong and just haven't looked hard enough. That she would joke with her coworkers they weren't working fast food. They were serving French fine dining because they were chic filet. The spelling was what brought on the joke. When I first learned about this change last year, what was so crazy about it was the recentness of it all. The place I'm living now, I basically moved into the end of 2013 and got fully settled into the beginning of 2014. There's a chick filet just down the street. At that time, it was still C-H-I-C. I then noticed the change at a different location almost two years after while on a road trip, which was in November 2015, well before I was aware of the Mandela Effect. It was immediately noticeable as being different, not just from the spelling, 
But because it was overall wider than I'm used to seeing, because of the extra length added to accommodate the K. Uh, of course, like always, thought it was a standard company revision decision. Figured they changed the name to avoid pronunciation issues. Not a big deal. Went on with life. Got reminded of it again shortly after with my nearby home location signage switched to the new spelling as well. Still nothing more to me than a mental note the company name had officially changed. So that's from 1989 to 2015. It spanned just over 25 years, a quarter of a century. I'd see this joint of chic filet. Why can't you just admit you're misremembering and misread the name? Are you so arrogant to think that you're right and reality is wrong? I'm not being stubborn. I'm not being unreasonable. This isn't coming from any delusional arrogance. I know full well that place was C-H-I-C. I'm not going to robotically discard 25 years worth of keen visual perceptions and life experience to keep in step with the matrix. If current reality is telling me chic filet never existed, then yes, I'm going to say reality is wrong. And it's not even really saying reality is wrong. It's more that reality is not fully understood. It's truly bizarre to me how it wasn't that long ago the intentional misspelling of this place is what I assume to be for everybody a known thing. To have it come to this, where it's up for any kind of discussion on what it used to be, to the point I'm on here making videos about it on YouTube, is beyond belief. But here we go. Just to prepare you, we get quite the mouthful of excuses from deniers on this case file. Chick-fil-A is easily one of the strongest undeniable enemies, and therefore one of the biggest targets for debunking. The Agent Smiths really come out in force and aggressively attempt to pick it apart. Even after defending against each argument individually, they'll say it's the overall combination of these rational explanations that contributes to the spelling mix-up. And we just don't have the sense to accept it because we're clouded by wanting to feel special and wanting this phenomenon to be real. Hey, you look cool! I feel cool! <laughs> Most people aren't wanting this to be real. I'm on record as being excited by the changes, but the majority of those out there acknowledging the reality of it have a negative reaction. They think it's CERN or the devil, and in times great deception. They wish more than anything it wasn't happening. And there's nothing special feeling about having the general population consider us crazed maniacs who've lost grip on reality, believe me. The challenge with this phenomenon and presentations about it is deniers do have current reality on their side. History and most physical evidence is in their favor. It's not at all an enviable position to be in when trying to debate on the former existence of something. I'm realistic about that. If Chick-fil-A is merely a vague recollection for you, none of my arguments are likely to be compelling. You'll default to prior life experience that reality shifts are impossible and probably side with deniers. For those who have a vivid 100% recollection, you'll be completely on board with any strong defense of our true to life experiences and wonder how it's not immediately obvious to everyone else what's going on. Those somewhere in the middle who don't necessarily consider themselves to be fully affected but suspect something strange is afoot, be careful. You just might be jumping on board the crazy train with us Mandela effectees. Let's get started. First on the go-to list from deniers is usually the popular cow ads with their eat more chicken slogan. That the comical misspellings within these commercials and displays is what influences us to also assume a misspelling with the restaurant's name. What they fail to mention is the cow ad campaign didn't start until 1995. At first only with billboards. Their first TV ads didn't air until 1997. In either case, well after many of us were already fully familiar with the franchise and had the name fully entrenched in our minds. By the way, in case you deniers haven't noticed, the cows are misspelling the word chicken, C-H-I-K, not C-H-I-C. I realize there are those who remember it as C-H-I-K, Chick-fil-A. By no means am I dismissing that, but it gets into the larger topic of evolving incremental changes, which I'll eventually devote time to in a separate presentation. Next denier go to is pointing out product packaging that displays cropped and truncated print of the word chick, claiming them as the culprits of confusion. In particular, drink cups turned at just the right angle, and even more so the chain's most popular menu item, their famed waffle fries, cherry picking straight on shots and putting them forth as the most damning evidence. As if we don't live in a 3D world where it's also this that would be seen in the same setting. And omitting the fact that most packaging displays the full word chick. I get that they're selectively showing them straight on and at certain angles to illustrate their point. It's just that once again, like with the cow ads, they're conducting a biased, lazy investigation and not painting a true picture. Because just as it's not uncommon for companies to redesign their logos, it's also not uncommon for them to redesign their product packaging as well. 
Do you really think the packaging designs of the 2000s is the same as years past? I took the liberty of finding out and hope we can agree that its span of influence should stop at the point from before it existed. That if I can demonstrate people knew the restaurant's name to be spelled C-H-I-C well before the appearance of said packaging, that we can safely rule it out as a factor. As best as I can tell, 1998 was when the modern styling container for our beloved waffle fries first hit the scene. Here's official packaging history from the company website. We see clearly they didn't heavily crop their logo decades prior. Those are the mailboxes. Here are the drink cups and fries. Along with several other shots for years past, no crop. But let's play things safe with this. Let's take it a step further and find out when waffle fries were even added to the menu so we can completely eliminate them from the equation, which is very simple to do. The official company website says they were added in 1985. Newspaper archives confirmed before that they had regular fries. Now that we have that established, let's check residue sources pre-1985. This is before any cow ads, before current era packaging, and even before waffle fries. What do we find? For expediency, I'm going to refer to the former version of the spelling simply as chic filet. To start, here are a couple of books. This one published right at 1985. It has chic filet. This one is from 1978. They committed to ink and paper twice. Chic filet. How about the newspaper archives? As far back as 1969, we have yet again chic filet. These are obviously just basic typos, you say? Well, the company used to have a team for the Southern Textile Basketball Tournament. And here they're called Team Chic Filet all throughout. The 70s was a great decade. It brought us Jaws, Star Wars, your host Jacobian. It also brought us plenty of chic filet. These are human beings that type this with editorial oversight. One after another, chic filet, chic filet. So what's going on? How is this happening? Did the cows and waffle fries quantum teleport to the 70s? Well, they must have infiltrated all space-time because we find it in different states, different papers, different years, all throughout each article. Chic filet. Chic filet, chic filet, chic, 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 chic. These writers know how to spell chic, as you can clearly see where I have highlighted in green. But all throughout the rest of the text, it's overwhelmingly chic. Chic actually comes off as the air. This happens quite a bit with the chicks and chics bizarrely mingled. Frequently, you'll find the body is all chic, but the main headline has remained chic. Residue can be mysterious that way and will sometimes actually gradually change. In a couple years or months from now, these red highlights may end up with a K inside them. Not just within this video, but also the original newspapers.com source, any screenshots or printed out hard copies you the viewer at home makes. If it happens, the change will occur everywhere. And I promise it's not for me pulling some kind of magic trick. I really enjoy residue examples like this where the logo with the K would have been right in the ad maker's face. Still, they put chic filet. And look what's right next to it. A correction's been issued for a coupon, incorrectly stating all-you-can-eat meals instead of all-you-can-eat sandwiches for $1.29. Shouldn't the actual place the customer would be visiting take priority as well? They should have issued a correction for the correction. Now, I'm not one to think the poor person who put this ad together was incompetent. I contend the logo and text used to match. How and why residue like this even exists for any of these reality shifts is something to contemplate. Is it a glitch in the matrix? Is it possibly naturally occurring due to an ever-merging multiverse? If man-made via CERN and quantum computers, is it from a limitation with the technology? If spiritually caused, is it purposely left behind by God or some other benevolent being as a wink and a nod to those of us awake? Or there is such a thing as typos, don't you know? Gee, thanks for that. I've never heard of such a concept. You mind telling me why they're consistently in the way so many of us remember? How about explain why the same typo happens over and over in the same body of text, in countless articles, with a simple word like chick. Clearly it was spelled that way with intent. What'll get said next? Everyone's K key was broken? And speaking of K, Denierfest continues with the suggestion that the letter K simply gets lost within the cursive style writing because of the letters being all strung together. 
Um, you've got to be kidding me. Anyone with eyes can see, there's no missing that K. It literally sticks out like a sore thumb. And like I mentioned before, makes the overall logo look too wide with the added length. This must be coming from a younger crowd who were never taught cursive growing up. Just because something gets offered up and search for a plausible explanation doesn't mean it automatically has merit. And this is one desperate suggestion that shouldn't even have to be addressed. It's our expectation to see the common spelling of chick. Our minds fully anticipate that K. But that won't stop the denying and gaslighting from ending. Oh no. It then gets said that because the adjacent word filet is abbreviated and misspelled, our brains automatically assume the word chick should be misspelled too, applying the same unconventional spelling logic to the rest of the name so they intelligibly match. It's the word chick that's seen first. Again, a word we're all familiar and educated enough with to know how to spell. If anything, we'd be inclined to correct any surrounding words. You know, like you deniers always say we do with other M.E.s, such as Fruit Loops and Febreze. So which is it? Our brains are wired to auto-correct or auto-misspell. Make up your fallible minds. The final insulting shot is attempting to turn our own anchor experiences against us, claiming they're actually the cause of confusion. That just as when people comedically pronounce Target as Target, or refer to Taco Bell as Taco Hell, enough people must have jokingly pronounced Chick-fil-A as Chic-fil-A, tied various French jokes along with it, and voila, the false memory of the Chick-fil-A name was born. My own siblings use this tactic to dismiss my mom and I. It's tough to address while maintaining a gentlemanly demeanor, because no matter how tenderly they phrase it, it's an insult. Basically, they're saying we're so dumb as to not understand the difference between a joke and reality. Putting that aside, my retort is to not forget the non-joke related anchors, with kids pointing out the misspelling and confused customers inquiring about the pronunciation. Clearly, they weren't in on the joke yet. And if from a joke, why would those taking it to such a whacked out extreme claiming reality is changing only be doing it with Chick-fil-A? Where are the employees from Target insisting they used to literally work at Target? Or all the Taco Bell customers saying it totally used to say Taco Hell on the sign, so now they're shook. They're nowhere to be found, because no one is so dumb not to know the difference. And no one is being that dumb when it comes to Chick-fil-A. And if they are, well, they've left quite the paper trail. It's worth reiterating how absurd it is that in an educated country, this grade school level word time after time gets so constantly misspelled in all these books and newspapers. These things go through a proofreading process. There is seriously no reason to continually type it out like this unless that's what it was. A great video that goes further into this kind of evidence is on the channel End Times Bible Intelligence. Link is in the description. Now, his view of the Mandela effect is it's something evil, and that's fine. I won't fault anyone for that. He could be right. Who knows at this point? We can differ on the cause and still be allies bringing awareness to this effect. And with that, he does a great job bringing up sources from .edu and .gov sites that I doubt get influenced by French chicken jokes, as well as LinkedIn profiles showing a long list of people posting themselves as employed at the Chick-fil-A we've always known and remember. We have Representative Chick-fil-A in Texas. We got another one. Marketing catering promos at Chick-fil-A. Director of Operations at Chick-fil-A. So I'm sorry if the Director of Operations doesn't know where they work at, then we, we got some serious problems. We got Chick-fil-A trainer and photographer. We have Assistant Operations Director at Chick-fil-A. These are real people with real LinkedIn profiles that claim they work at C-H-I-C-F-I-L-A. His video was made three years ago. Yet still to this day, we find people posting profiles as Chic Filet. I wouldn't be surprised if some of these people still literally see it as C-H-I-C, not micro-hallucinating or misreading, literally seeing it that way. Why do I say that? Because so often we really are shifting at different times. There are fellow Mandela effectees that shifted on this before 2014 when I was still seeing it as C-H-I-C. As implausible as that sounds, I'll show some current eBay posts to make my point. Visually, the actual products are Chic, but they'll be lifted as chic. With pictures I assume the sellers took themselves, zoomed right in on the logo, held right in their hand. Accurately matching the strange spellings of more chicken and peace love chicken directly from the products, describing other viewable text accurately, except when it comes to the words Chick-fil-A. 
It's hard to imagine them missing that standard spelling with a K. I genuinely suspect they're actually seeing it the former way just as clearly and unmistakably as we used to. For whatever reason, the perceptual update hasn't hit them yet. Now, if we called it out and brought the difference to their attention, I'm not sure how they'd react. They may shrug it off like they never noticed and robotically correct it, or be completely freaked out, blown away, maybe even excited after fully realizing what's happened. I think it depends on one's level of consciousness. That, or I guess everyone's getting carried away squeezing in chicken jokes wherever they can. To have some fun, next time you visit a Chick-fil-A, try a little game. Casually ask another customer or employee when the restaurant changes name. You might get quite the reaction, causing a shift for that person. If you get a live one, feel free to tell them about the Mandela Effect. That's enough fun and games for today. This is serious business, folks. No matter what the cause, good or bad, we're being granted a glimpse into the true nature of reality. If we only take pause to bother and look. I propose to look more again soon. <laughs>